So we added a null so that we can create the tracking data that we're going to be using inside of this scene because we separated into two plates being the main footage with him inside of it and then the clean plate when he dashes outside of it. Um, we actually rotoscoped him out just for a few frames inside of this to make it look like he gets out of the frame and then the background is still there. And the reason we created the null is because we needed tracking data for the clean plate and for the main plate so that the assets move just even if the camera moves slightly, you'd want it to match perfectly. So this is the only reason I did it. But if you're on a tripod specifically, you can actually skip this step because there won't be any movement. But I did this handheld the best I can and that's why we went about it this way. So what I want you guys to do now is to take all those electric assets and we're just gonna be positioning, retiming, and changing the location of these assets to fit what we're doing in the scene. And if you're working on different footage, this is gonna change for you. But the idea, the concept of what we're doing is still the same. What we're doing is we're trying to position things and put them in a place where we see fit for what we're doing. We're gonna make it look pretty later and all the effects and make it blend. But for right now, what we're doing is just putting them in the place that we see fit for what we're trying to do. When you're done all that, take all of your assets and pre-comp them together with the rotoscope layer inside of there. Then I want you to take the rotoscope layer and add a fill effect and turn it black. The next thing you're going to do is add a black solid and then you're going to put it at the bottom of the whole composition. And this is a cool trick because what I'm doing is I'm putting the assets underneath and around my layer to add some kind of more dimension to it. But when we take it back into the main comp and we change it to a screen blending mode and we add a glow, the glow is not going to only fill in all of the spaces, but it's also going to wrap around our subject which is what we're looking for this is a neat little trick to add a bit of a light wrap to your subject and it's something that you're going to utilize in a lot of your stuff if you understand the concept of what we're doing but for right now i'm just going to let you guys watch a bit of me working and seeing how i position and place things in the scene feel free to put this into slow motion but i just want you guys to be able to watch how i work instead of explaining every small step Another dope effect that you'll see a lot of people do is add some distortion to their scene. And the easiest way to do this is by duplicating your energy layer of that pre-comp, disabling it, then adding an adjustment layer and using something like Red Giant's chromatic displacement or even the distortion map effect that's natively in After Effects and then using that disabled clip as a distortion map to add some more distortion to the scene. To make it look like there was a glow on the floor, I duplicated the energy footage and then I oriented it as a 3D layer to match the perspective of the floor. I also wanted it to look like energy was dispersing when he did the dash. So I took some of Film Riot's quick burst energy assets and then I found a cool little dust asset on Make Big Film's website that made it look like there was a lot of dust and stuff following the trail that was going on. From there, I just masked out certain parts of the image changed the opacity, pre-comped it all together, and then added a tritone effect and tinted it just so I can blend it in a bit better with the scene to make it look like it was all working together at once. And again, for the last part where the takeoff takes place, I added different things like embers, sparks flying, electricity hitting, just to make it look like everything was blending together a bit more and there was a lot of velocity from the impact of that flash effect taking place. This is the same idea I used for the beginning part. So this part, like I said, is something I'll let you just watch so that you can get an idea of what I was doing. When everything was done, I added what I would call like the sweeteners essentially is what I call it. And I added an adjustment layer and put the fine edges effect on there and then keyframe the inversion of it to happen only for two frames before I added another adjustment layer where I added the CC light rays effect. And that was just another sweetener that we see a lot in animes and stuff actually when like energy or blasts go off. And this is just another creative piece that you can add, you don't need to, but it's something I feel just adds that extra bit to the image to make it pop when you see something happen. And then when the dash took place, we added a shake to it. And I did this using Production Crate's shake script, which I think is absolutely amazing, going to jolt number three. And Jacob Dalton, actually, I'll give shout outs to this because I actually seen him do this a bunch of times and I love when he uses this script shake. But you can also do this wiggle expressions, the transform one and the native settings and after effects, it doesn't matter. As long as you figure out what kind of shake works for what you're trying to do, it all works the same. This is just completely subjective. So don't follow exactly what I'm doing 
there's other ways to do it this is just the way that i went about it then the last thing i did was color grade it and i did that by adding the first adjustment layer which was a conversion LUT for the sony back to rec 709 a creative LUT on top of that and then i used magic bullet looks i love this thing with a passion and we use the optical diffusion effect the mojo the renoiser and a couple of other things just so that we can ground this effect to look a lot better and that's how i created this dash effect and after effects and shout outs to double j cosplay share it with somebody that'll find it valuable and remember to get out there and create because it's your unique take on these things that provides value to this whole community and we need to just pay it forward i'll see you guys on the next one i hope you enjoyed it have a great day